Yeah, my question uh, is this, that uh, everybody is working to strengthen the feminism, and it is good that we are working for that. But in a country like India, we have, uh, the, you know, millions of women are suffering, just they are not getting the primary health care even. So when we will start to save the women first, when we will start to save the adolescent first, when we will start a drive where we will be against the uh, female infanticide, you know, we, we, we are talking about gender equality. It is good. Even we also had a question, a very big event in India in 2017 where uh, 25,000 uh, people, male, pe male uh, dominating society, or we can say the male pe population were gathered together to uphold the idea of gender equality. But, you know, since then I'm working here and the big question arise when I have diagnosed more than 3 lakh females in India uh, uh, through our initiative and we found that they are suffering from multiple diseases, multiple transferable diseases, HIV, STDs, they are anemic and we are working on the gender equality, it is good, but when we will save the women, then we can have the idea of the gender equality. This is my first question. Also, we are working on a child marriages also. So this is, I just want to ask then when uh, we will take it as a primarily agenda to save the women in making uh, their health care as a priority. Thank you so much. Thank you, Davendra. Uh, over to SG. Now, I, I'm not sure if I understood well, Mr. Devendra, but uh, um, uh, I mean, it is exactly because in many countries we have dramatic basic problems in healthcare, uh, in the economy, in income, uh, in education, uh, and we have uh, uh, all areas of the population that have no access uh, uh, to uh, basic services. This is not a reason to put gender equality as a secondary issue, because if those situations exist, the biggest victims of those situations are essentially women. And so, obviously, it's not enough to fight for gender equality. We need to fight for adequate health care, including sexual and reproductive health care. We need to fight for education for all. We need to find to support uh, uh, by, for instance, uh, basic income being provided. I remember Brazil, at a certain moment, they instituted the Bolsa Familia, which was a basic form of support to uh, um, the poor families, that uh, all poor families would benefit to guarantee that they would have a minimum. And several other countries have adopted uh, uh, measures of this sort. Others have more difficulty to do so. So... Uh, we need to, of course, address the most dramatic economic and social problems, and we need to denounce the injustices of this world, the unfair globalization that we have unfortunately lived in for decades uh, that are responsible for those uh, terrible situations affecting large sectors of the population in so many countries of the world. Even in developed countries, we have poor areas. I mean, we have racism and uh, other forms of discrimination um, that uh, make poverty be uh, uh, unevenly distributed. And uh, I mean, uh, uh, if I'm, I'm in the US, the Afro-American community, for instance, uh, has a, a much more dramatic impact, the problems of poverty, the problems of health, etc., cetera, than uh, uh, other sectors of the population. So, I mean, it is clear that we need to address those basic problems, but it is clear that when those basic problems exist, the biggest victims are women. And so gender equality must be embedded in the way and the gender equality policies must be embedded in the way we address the most basic gaps of development and the well-being that any country has in relation to their populations. And of course, uh, uh, one of the big campaigns, you mentioned healthcare, that we are engaged in is for universal healthcare. Um, and universal health care is, I would say, one of the most important objectives of the United Nations. And in universal health care, obviously, all the questions related to uh, sexual and reproductive rights, uh, but all the questions also related to mental health that is dramatically impacted by the COVID, and all the questions related to, uh, I mean, um, the, the most vulnerable uh, um, uh, areas of the population, people with uh, uh, different forms of handicap, indigenous populations, etc. I mean, it's essential 
that uh, policies to develop healthcare in a country are done in a, an equal basis and address uh, the difficulties of all sectors of the population. The question of child marriage is, is a very important question, not only in itself. I mean, it's uh, a, a dramatic thing that so many uh, uh, young uh, girls are forced into marriage uh, because of the extreme poverty of their families or because of the uh, insecurity problems and the way their families see as uh, uh, a solution when it is not a solution. It, it is another problem uh, that uh, makes it even more serious and more dramatic, the, not only the problems of gender equality, but the violations of human rights. Uh, but uh, uh, what uh, the increase in child marriage is revealing today is the dramatic impact of the COVID-19 in the situation of women in general and of girls. Uh, we see girls um, uh, much more impacted than boys in relation to uh, school uh, closures. And uh, a, a meaningful number of girls are out of school. Uh, I, I believe uh, uh, we have 743 million girls out of schools and uh, 111 million in LDCs. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, as... Uh, Many uh, of uh, the developing countries have a large informal economy and the informal economy was dramatically impacted by COVID and most of the countries have no mechanisms to support the informal economy. We saw more and more families going into poverty, more and more women going into poverty. And because of that, child marriage becoming for many of them. And this is a big mistake. But in any case, in their, I mean, uh, backward vision, a, 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 a solution that they try to find. Uh, and on the other hand, um, the, the fact that the levels of poverty and anger are increasing in the world uh, makes women particularly vulnerable and young girls particularly vulnerable. And we see this dramatic increase in child marriage. Uh, and uh, this is central to all our programs, all our advocacy programs. And of course, the most important aspects that we have to address is the root causes of it. There are root causes that are political, that are cultural, but there are now specific root causes linked to the economy and to the COVID-19 impact. And uh, what we have been uh, pushing, first of all, is through a global commitment uh, in order to support debt relief and to support the provision of much higher levels of liquidity.